In his letter to the Romans, Paul asked his readers, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? As it was at work on the cross, as it was at work on the cross, the grace of God is at work in holy baptism. In his large catechism, Luther writes of baptism, So you see plainly that there is no work done here by us, but a treasure which God gives us, and faith grasps. It is like the benefit of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross, which is not a work, but a treasure included in the word. It is offered to us and received by faith. <coughs> English hymn writer Isaac Watts captured that sense of an appreciation of the wonderful and the mysterious work of God in the crucifixion as he wrote the cherished hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And we'll sing that hymn now.
begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes the in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Almighty God, we know and admit that we are sinners. We are conceived and born sinful, and we add on to that burden of sin throughout our lives by our heedless thoughts, our careless words, our loveless deeds. Indeed, we deserve God's punishment now and eternally. When we reflect honestly upon our lives, we readily see that we need repentance and renewal that can only come through our Lord Jesus Christ. So then let us make confession to our gracious God. Almighty God, God, we we repent of our sins in thought and word and and deed. You know too well our our failings and our transgressions. Be merciful to us, and and for the sake of Jesus, grant us your forgiveness. So that as your redeemed people, we may find rest in you and with refreshed hearts, serve you in time and in eternity. In the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. In whose hearts are the highways to Zion. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow nests for herself, where she may lay her down at your altar, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, and in his power are the highways to Zion. Pass on before the people 
taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and taking your hand a staff with you, which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on a rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so. In the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because the quarreling of people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make the Lord the Lord to you and with songs of praise. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are our people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as at Meribah, as on the day of Massa, in the wilderness. When your fathers put me to the test, and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. The epistle reading this morning is from Romans 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since we have justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we are still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, 
You have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be will be thirsty for will never be thirsty forever. The water that I give him will come to him in a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one that you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say in Jerusalem is a place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You will worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is come, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship, worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, o Christ. <laughs>
said before, isn't it true that more often than not, we come to church here tired and worn out after a busy week? And sometimes the fatigue is more on the inside of our lives than it is outwardly. The house of God is a good place to be when you're just plain tired, or at a deeper level, tired out. Today's Gospel from John 4 offers us refreshment. Refreshment for our bodies and our souls that are running on empty. As we read the Gospel lesson, we saw that Jesus was tired and thirsty. After walking 40 miles from Jerusalem to Samaria, coming to Sychar at the height of the noonday sun, he sat down by Jacob's well in order to rest and hoping to get a refreshing drink of water. The Son of God, who became the Son of Man, was tired and weary. And I think, think the Gospel writer is very deliberate in giving us this detail. We have a Lord who knows what it means to be tired, to be worn out. It's no sin to feel that way. The woman who came to the water, came to the well in order to draw water, came at noontime, kind of a strange time to come, probably trying to avoid the other women of the town. And that woman, too, was weary. However, she was feeling a different kind of weariness. She was tired of marriage, having five of them already fail. She was tired of being shunned and being ostracized by the other women, brought in, of course, in some measure, by her lifestyle, and because of her current living arrangements, no doubt. She was living with a man who wasn't her husband. She was tired of the petty bickering where, where, about which was the right place to worship. Were you supposed to worship down in Jerusalem, or you, were you supposed to worship up in Samaria? She was tired of life in general. Tired of waking up each morning expecting nothing more than the same old thing. The conversation between Jesus and this woman is like an overpass on an interstate highway. The two highways never truly intersect. One passes over the other. Jesus spoke of water welling up from an unending source. He talks about a gushing wellspring of water pouring out from the living God, a spiritual water quenching an inner thirst permanently. Of course, the words of Jesus are really a revelation concerning himself. He is the true living water. But while Jesus was thinking in terms of spiritual things, the woman was thinking in terms of physical things. She was talking about physical water, and she gets lost in this conversation. She's concentrating on that actual well from which the water has to be drawn, and where the stranger is going to find a bucket in order to draw some water from that well. Now, you and I aren't here simply to listen in on this exchange of words between Jesus and this Samaritan woman. We are here to ask, what does this say or mean to me? What is this lesson all about for me? And if we are honest, we have to admit that so often we're just like this woman. Perhaps not too much as to lifestyle, but as to the many exhausting concerns and questions that wear us down and make us tired too. Worries about all kinds of things. Deep disappointments concerning our hopes and our dreams. Overcommitment to work. 
wrong priorities in life. Wrong, wrong priorities that have come become habits. All of these things serve to dry up our souls, to wear us down physically, to leave us thirsting for something more, and wondering how the words of Jesus can solve our current life problems. The question might be, how do we get through the various dilemmas that we're now facing? Or the question might be, why even try anymore? Because I'm worn out and I'm tired. We hear the Lord proclaim himself to be this spring of living water for our thirst. But too often we turn away and we don't even listen to him. This is what sin causes us to do. But oftentimes the process is so slow and so gradual that it almost goes unnoticed, except for the lingering thirst for the answer to our question, is this what life is all about? Come to me, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are tired and weary, and I will give you rest. That's his call again to us today. The same Lord who offered water of eternal life to this Samaritan woman offers the same to you and to me. And he says, trust in me and believe. Yes, God loves us sinners so much that he sent his own son to be the promised Messiah. The story of Lent reminds us once again that Jesus poured out his own life for the sins of the world. He lived. He suffered. He died to provide the living water that washes away the thirst of sin. With his arms Outstretched upon the cross, he cried out, I thirst. But he hung there until the full payment for our sins was made. <clears throat> and then he proclaimed and shouted, It is finished. Our salvation is now complete because of what Jesus did for us. For on the third day, Jesus rose again to prove that. And he lives to refresh us through the gospel proclaimed from the lips of believers, through the gospel proclaimed in the waters of holy baptism, through the gospel proclaimed in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in holy communion. The gospel isn't a command to do this or to do that. It isn't a command to go here or to go there. The gospel is the good news of God's love and forgiveness in Jesus and his invitation to receive and, and drink deeply from his word, to worship him in spirit and in truth. The gospel calls us to look upward to him in faith, not downward, wondering where the buckets are or whether the well will refresh our inmost needs. When we are thirsty and parched, when we are tired and weary, God often speaks to us and provides refreshing water through others who have been down that same road before and have found strength and refreshment to go on through faith. Let me share with you three witnesses. Here is the testimony of a woman born about 350 years ago. You'll probably recognize the name. Her name was Susanna Wesley. She was a resourceful woman who lived in England. Get this, she brought 19 children into this world. 19. But nine of them died in infancy. She and her minister husband battled disease, 
faced poverty and heartache, including losing two houses by fire. Mm -hmm. Suzanne Wesley taught all of her children herself and even wrote the curriculum, wrote the textbooks. She had a remarkable grasp of church history and theology, which she passed on to her sons and daughters, including in particular to, to her two sons, John and Charles, the founders of the Methodist Church. Charles wrote such hymns as Hark the Herald Angels Sing and Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Susanna was widowed in her late 30s, and she herself died in her mid-40s, but not before leaving behind a legacy of prayers. And among them, we find intercessions of this quality. She wrote, Grant me grace to stay and center my soul in thee to calmly attend to the dispensations of thy providence, and to have a firm, habitual resignation to thy will. Enable me to love thee, my God, with all my heart and mind and strength, as thou give me the grace in every time of life. When reading such a prayer and remembering the heartaches and the hardships that she suffered and went through in life, and how tired and worn out she must have been. I can't say, well, poor me. Look at me. I'm so tired and worn out. But rather, I must focus on, this, on that same grace, the grace that sustained Susanna Wesley in her life, that is, the refreshing water of the grace of Christ. Here's a second example, Thomas Dorsey, and that's not the Tommy Dorsey who was the jazz <laughs> person. This is a different guy. He was a child of an impoverished family, black family, in the Deep South at the turn of the 20th century. He grew up amidst the fears of racial bigotry and violence that was so prevalent at the time. But he had a genius for music. And he began in his life to write music in the genre which was known as the blues. He played his songs in a number of no-name places down in New Orleans and other places throughout the South. Until in 1928, when his wife and his son died both the same day. It was at that time that a spring of living water gushed into Dorsey's life when a minister preached the good news of God's grace to him in Christ. He then began to write what we now call gospel blues or spirituals. Perhaps the best known and the most loved is Precious Lord, Take My Hand. The words of that song include these. I am tired. I am weak, I am worn. But this great man of faith calls upon the precious Lord to take my hand, to make me stand, to lead me home. Our Lord does just that. Leading us to living waters where he himself is the wellspring that never runs dry, encouraging us to drink deeply. Finally, I share with you these words from Martin Marty, <clears throat> who is perhaps one of the greatest Lutheran theologians living today. He wrote these words in his book, A Cry of Absence, after losing his wife to cancer. Marty writes, The gospel is still grace-giving, even though we don't feel its power or see its fruits at the present time and circumstance. Accept the bleak, 
accept the bleak spaces of Christian life as times when God's absence to our sight calls upon us to hold to Him by faith. Let me read that again. Accept the bleak spaces of Christian life as times when God's absence to our sight calls upon us to hold to Him by faith. Appreciate mentors and stay connected to people who have been through this wilderness before, carried through by their faith. The writer of the soul, the, I'm sorry, the winter of the soul is not forever. Let God work through it in ways that we can grasp only by going through it, not around. Tired days call for strength. We can find that strength by trusting in God, our merciful and gracious Heavenly Father, who invites us to call upon Him in every need, and who has promised to be our strength for all the days of our lives. So don't let the troubles cares and the concerns of daily life wear you down and consume all of your time and energies so that you lose sight of the ultimate goal. Christ lived, Christ died, Christ rose again, and he is here for us. He will see us through all of the times when we are tired and weary, when we are thirsty, Today he calls us and reminds us that he is the spring of living water that not only quenches our immediate thirst, but also wells up to eternal life where we will thirst no more. Amen. Amen.
As we reflect on how God intersects with his people at the crossroads of life and graciously meets their physical and spiritual needs, we speak the first article of the Apostles' Creed and its meaning as it is set forth in the small catechism, which relates the loving work of God the Father for us. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body, soul, eyes and ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land and animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need, to support this body and mine. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does on the Father me with goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this is in my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Church, gracious Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on all in, the, in your church throughout the world. Fill the church with all truth and peace. Where it is in error, reform it. Where it is in need, supply it. Where it is right, strengthen and confirm it. And where it is in conflict, heal divisions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear my prayer. We pray this day for the fellowship of faith and love that we enjoy as God's baptized and holy people, asking that we may gather for worship with great joy and full anticipation of the blessings of God that come to us through it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who serve in leadership positions in our national synod, in our district, and in our local congregation, that God may work among us through their examples and that we may grow in devotion and dedication in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We make petitions for the sick, <coughs> the shut-in, the sorrowing, those undergoing hardships or challenges, and all who this day need our prayers, especially those whom we now name in our hearts. That their prayers may be soon answered, that they may be supported by God's people as they experience his good and gracious will for their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that our lives may be offerings of the best that we have and are in response to the great offering of our Lord Jesus Christ for us on the cross and that what we give of our time, our talent, and treasure for the work of the Lord will bring blessing to many. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, since you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and have promised that where two or three are gathered in, in your name, you will give ear to their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and the petitions of your servants, as may be best for them, granting us in this world of knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And now we thank you that by the working of your Holy Spirit through the gospel, you have called us as your own and given us eternal promises through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, as the perfect offering, has taken upon himself the sins of the world and has, by his rising from the grave, opened to us the very gates of heaven. With all the company around the throne of, around the throne of the Lamb in, the, in His kingdom, we join the unending praises. <laughs> So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
for having fed us with the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby that we are truly members of his body, the church. Be among us with your sacred and refreshing gifts, O Lord, and enlighten us by the working of your Holy Spirit, that we may continue in this fellowship and do the good works which you desire us to do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the same Spirit be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
sellers, and if you would just put it in an offering plate and mark it as uh, lilies for Easter, and if it's in memory of anyone, you can also put that down too. Did you say 15? 15. Okay. I just want to say that uh, we have David giving us the honor of so much knowledge for our Sunday school class. I wish everybody would come and participate. It's mm -hmm. been a wonderful study, and it will go on for through what? So, until Easter on Monday nights at 6 p.m., we're going to meet here. If you have an interest in being part of the core per chorus, I know, right? Try and say that three times fast. Um, so, it was originally going to be a woman's chorus, but we have some interest from men, so I'm going to open it up to anyone who would like to join us. Um, we are going to sing on Good Friday evening. We are also going to sing on Easter and one time after Easter during the Easter season. Um, but it's a great chance to stretch your vocal cords, even if you haven't sung before, I am happy to have you join because I love, I think everyone is a singer, whether you can carry a tune or not. Um, so that is, that is one part of it. And also if we have any instrumentalists who are interested in blessing us with their talents, we have a few who are working on some stuff right now, but also come at 6 p.m. on Monday night so we can kind of work things through. And on Sundays, we would probably be starting at 9.45 to kind of make sure that we've got things in tune and everything like that. So just kind of letting you know for the next couple weeks, and I guess we'll try and put it in the bulletin as like a regular scheduled thing. Um, that's what we're going to do. And if we have good turnout, which to me a good turnout is three or more, so uh, <laughs> we'll continue this through the summer, okay? This is kind of exciting. I know we can't have you all up here because then there's no one to sing to. But, uh, <laughs> I will promise that if you see Saga sing in the chorus, you will not be seen because I will have the camera up there. That I promise. And for those of you who may have gotten something from my daughter this morning, if you would just come up here after service. <laughs> Thank you. I have one thing. Um, I need some help. I have been going to the VA for some medical stuff, and I need to go down to, and David's been going with me. But, but because he loses a day of work, which means a day of pay, he wanted me to see if anybody would be interested in going down with me tomorrow morning. I have to be out of here no later than 8.15, so I can get down to the parking garage so we can get on a bus to get over to the hospital so I can go get a bone density test done. I sh we should be back by one if everything goes well. So if there's anybody that's interested that can do that, please let me know today. Otherwise, David's going to take a day off of work. Salad you want to bring? Please bring. What does 